And I've got the cutlass for us as well. So we can do a couple things with that maybe. Nice. Hey everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the HEMA pandemic live stream class. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some of the tools that I really have a good time playing with. I first learned about using the tomahawk and the knife from Steve Huff and John Lennox, who in turn learned it from Colonel Dwight McLemore. So training with them and then continuing on with my own training and combining it with what I've done in the past and then looking at the martial truth, regardless of the tool, I have found that this is just a lot of fun. And while we're looking at this today, we have the two weapons. The general way that we're gonna use these to start off with is our initial actions are gonna start in a full grip. So we're holding the ax at the bottom. If you've got it up high, don't let it slide out because you have a real good chance of just slipping right off the end and then you send your ax flying and it ceases to be any good to you at all. So if you've got it here, push it on your hip. I have covered the grips of the tomahawk in another video and I'm gonna put the link to that video in the description of this one. So if you wanna look at more gripping and moving through your grips, we don't need to go over it now, you can watch that video. Our initial cutting pattern is going to work on the saber cut patterns of the 19th century. So one is gonna be descending from my right to my left, two descending from my left to my right, three, it can either be with the ax or the spike, is ascending from my right to my left, four, ascending from my left to my right, five, horizontal from right to left, six, horizontal from left to right, seven, straight down the middle. Eight can also be a rising blow. And so if you're in here, you can spin out and get these kind of angles to attack at different lines. That being said, most of your attacks are going to be one, two, or seven. Most of your defenses are going to be three, four, five, six. If my opponent gives me a cut one and I defend with a cut one, we now lock up. And if I get so focused on capturing that, I forget that he has a knife and that becomes a real danger to me. So our first action is going to be slaps. He gives me a one. I'm going to counter his one with a three up into my two position. Do that again. Now, as I say here at the school a lot, homie has a sword or homie has a knife. This time, homie has an ax. Get out of the way. Uh, this, all of these techniques also work with a hammer and screwdriver. Easy tools to get. Um, and it'll work against matching weapons, or you can also take these against longer weapons like swords, clubs, baseball bats, what have you. So again, I'm not gonna move. My opponent throws in that cut one. I'm gonna step to the side and do a cut three with a slap. So I end up tight on my left side, ready for my counter strike. So again, cut one, slap with a cut, three. He gives me a cut two. I'm going to step the other way and slap with a cut four. Do it again. If he gives me a cut one again, I can also slap with a cut five. Give me a cut one. I can step the other way and slap it with a cut six. So you can see how these are going to match together and allow you to counter these descending blows with rising or horizontal slaps. An important thing to remember about this is, give me that one again, I'm gonna do a cut three defensively. I'm not coming way out here and crossing my body because there's no reason for me to have my hand out here. It's now gonna take me too long to get back in. And if he just steps in and sticks that knife in the way, I now just throw my own 
arm on his knife. So instead, if you'll do that again, it just comes right here to my shoulder so I can come right back out. And that way, if you go ahead and hit my arm, I can, I've got a better chance of striking him. With these slapping actions, again, keep it right inside your silhouette. Anything out of side of your silhouette is wasted energy and takes too much time to get back into play. He's not really going to give me other strikes with a, a rising strike as attacks. He can, but primarily because I've got a tomahawk or an axe, it's almost always going to be descending because that's the way we're wired. Come down on him. But let's get into the fun stuff. You can practice those actions. So if you'll stand right there and face, yeah, face them. Mm -hmm. So cut one, cut two, cut three, cut four, cut five, cut six, cut seven. And with two weapons, as a general rule, and of course, once we have a rule, we're going to break it. But as a general rule, if you have two weapons, the weapon in your dominant hand is your offensive tool. The weapon in your weak hand is your defensive tool. General rule. So think about the way you're gripping it. Do I want to use my knife to defend and counter strike or attack with my axe? Or would I rather have it the other way around so I'm defending with my axe and attacking with my knife? Both are right. It all depends on the situation. So there's our cutting pattern. Now, we're going to use a uh, axe in the dominant hand, knife in the weak hand, hammer in the dominant hand, screwdriver in the weak hand. The attack is going to be a one. So I'm not going to move. This is coming out. Now, this is where I'm saying we're going to break it. So he attacks, and I step that aside, and then step forward and drive in. Another general rule with two weapons. If I have one high, one is low. So one high, one low. Very, very seldom will I have them both low or both high. It'll always be one way or the other. And if you train yourself to always keep one high, one low, it becomes very useful in your practice. So if you'll give me that blow again, flip it out. Now I have one high, one low. And because I kept it here, I'm just going to continue down onto his wrist as I come up. So let's do that again. And then I can drive it in. So let's do that one more time. Go slow. Step out, slap. I'm not trying to beat it to the side. All I'm doing, go ahead and hit me. I'm not going to move. Great. Do it again. Hit me. Good. Do it again. I'm only moving it there so that I've got axe high, knife low. Then I'm going to yank my axe down as my knife comes up and I step forward. And then I can drive it in. I'm not going to expect this to finish it. So then I'm going to drive into his ribs and then hit him again with my knife. So let's practice that. I will tell you, one of the things I really like about this combination of weapons, it allows me to get my violence on. Yeah. All right. So he attacks. I step out. Hook down. Ugh. Good? Good. Right. Let me go slow. I got carried away. I got to remember, I got to protect my John. It's actually a lot of fun when we do hawk and knife because he just gets super, super excited. And it's it's a blast to build this out. So he comes through, hook, down. And you can see how I'm hooking his arm with the beak. Up through the knife, step, or up through the arm, step forward, drive it in. I've got a release off of his arm because I'm hooked at the beak. The best way to release somebody that you've got a hook on, punch him. Get him off the end. So let's do that one more time. Uh, let's switch sides. The attack comes in, up, down, step forward, drive into his neck, punch into the ribs. 
when we're punching into the ribs, I'm in this position with my beak down. To release, I turn horizontal and fit it right underneath the ribs. If you've got a nice beak, drive the beak into their body as well. All of those work. And I promise you, it will distract them. But also understand, you won't necessarily finish them right off the bat. There's a story in the American Revolution of Native Americans that were attacking early American settlements and George Washington put out an order to destroy those villages. And it was a war crime, but the uh, chief of one of the villages was captured and he was outside of a fort. And one of the soldiers that was de uh, assigned to kill him was hitting him in the back of the head with a tomahawk. The tomahawk slipped out of his hand. The chief picked it up off the ground and gave it back to the guy. That's after being hit in the back of the head with a tomahawk a couple times. So understand, hitting them once isn't going to necessarily stop them. The idea behind this kind of fight, whether I am on a ship or out in the wilderness, my goal is to go that way. He's in my way. And I can't fence with him. These are not fencing tools. These are quick, down, dirty, hit, and run tools. If I'm on board a ship and I start fighting with him, or worse yet, I start retreating, I've got nowhere to go because I've got ocean all around me. I have to go that way. And he's in the way. So all of these actions are about hit and move and keep going. And the best way to keep him from following me, not necessarily to kill him, although that works great, but I can't focus on that. But I want to break him structurally. And let's look at what we do there. Let's switch sides again. Mm -hmm. He comes through. I step over. Hook. I've damaged his thumb. When I step forward, I'm taking the tendon right behind his elbow to finish that. Hitting him in the neck with my knife. Now, my knife is here, stuck in his throat. I need him off my knife. So I hit him there, and he leaves my knife. So that's how we're going through and breaking them structurally as well as doing damage. Just because you stuck a knife through a guy's neck does not mean you killed him either. We have documentation of a 16th century duel in which they were fighting with rapier and dagger. One guy stuck, and this is the way documentation goes, his rapier through and through at nipple height. So if you'll do that to me. Mm -hmm. The other one with his dagger stuck it through his throat this way, right through. And they both lived. Just got lucky and didn't hit anything vital. You can't expect it to finish them. One of the other sayings I say here all the time, dying is a long ways from dead. Don't hit them and expect it to be over. That only works in movie and training videos. Don't expect it. So now the attack has come in. I set it to the side. I have a reverse grip. Hook the wrist to pull him off balance. Cut the tendon, drive it in, push him off my knife. But he's smart. This time you're gonna do that to me. Okay. So I cut down, he hooks my wrist. Nope, there we go. And then drive in and then hit me with your ax to get me off your knife. I dislike the idea of that happening to me. So I'm not gonna let him do it. I throw my cut one, he sets that aside. He hooks me as he comes through. I hook his wrist with my knife, come up and drive it into his neck. My hand is still hurt, but I'm not done. Move back just a little mm -hmm. bit. Do that again, ready? Ready. Now from here, I'm not gonna hit him with my knife. I'm gonna break his knee. Again, if I break him structurally, he cannot follow me. And I'm just trying to go that way. Good? Good. All right, let's do it again. Boom. And then I move on. I love my job. 
Let's do it again. Okay. All right. So I throw. Oh, I missed. I got him under the shoulder. That's okay. I still push him away, and I can still take his knee. And then once I get here, I pull this in, and I pop him in the throat with my axe a couple times, and then just walk past him. I told you I wasn't going to put you down. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, at least it was from the kneeling position. Just to let y'all know, I love my job too. <laughs> so let's look at that again. I throw, he hooks it, ow. I cover that, I drive up into the throat. Look how that pushes him off balance. Now, you okay? Yep. Turn this way. I've got the beak behind his ear and I've got the spike under his chin. I'm gonna move you a little bit, okay? Go. Down and dirty rule. Where the head goes, the body has to follow, unless it's removed. Harder, that's a harder thing to do than you want to spend time in this kind of fight. Disclaimer, I have not done it to anybody. I just want to put that out there. So, again, I throw my attack. He covers it, ow. I'm defending with my knife. Driving up, kicking the knee. This time, instead of going for his neck, I get him, let's switch sides, under the arm. And I drive it there, right into his deltoid. So I'm driving. Now, there's a little bit extra here. I'm not just pushing him out of the way. This beak, I'm also driving right into the brachial plexus, the nerve cluster. You are really gonna get oh. their attention by doing that. And imagine, I'm, I'm gonna be off screen, but you can hear it. It's that sharp. I'm gonna do it and I'm not gonna hit you. Okay. okay. So I throw the attack. He goes for that. Hmm. That's all I'm doing, just right there. And just like throwing a punch, as I do it, I throw that hip and do it. And that's where I get it. And then when he stumbles back, all his weight goes to that leg. Now, I've got a weak leg that I can attack. Uh, Ted, is the reverse grip on the knife mainly to protect the forearm? That's a great question, Ted. It can go either way. Uh, yes, because I have my knife in the reverse grip or in my weak hand, I'm using this one more defensively. So I throw my attack with my dominant hand. He hooks that, he comes for me, I'm here. I can also do it for grip, but it's not gonna work quite as well. I throw that same attack, he's still gonna get me because my knife is gonna yield. I'm gonna hit him, but it's not gonna be as effective. Uh, a lot of times, can you hold that? In the, the mountain men or hunters would wear their knife here as a belly knife so that they can take a knee and still pull out their knife and work. It, a lot of sailors would actually wear their knife straight down the back. That way, when they're up working or they're on deck, they're not going to get their knife hooked on anything. I can't imagine being on the uh, the beams uh, yeah. up high and having your knife hook on one of the lines, you know, especially when the boat's doing this. But with it in the middle of my back, I can grab the knife with either hand. And so I'll go and take the. So I'm in here, and I can drop it down. So let's say he throws that, uh, that's going to take us into our next action. This time, he's going to throw a big old seven, the equivalent of a haymaker. You just throwing that in, right? If I try to stop that with one weapon, it's just going to yield and I'm going to get hit by both weapons, which again, not only painful, it's embarrassing. So I'm going to do a double weapon. This time, I'm going to rotate my knife foregrip. He throws that around, and I'm going to capture that, and I'm driving it in this way. Now, I know his other knife is going to come at me, 
So I'm yanking it down to cover his body. Now I'm going to drive it in under his ribs. I still have to worry about that knife, so I'm going to hook that. I've got the back end. I'm going to bash him in the nose once. Step forward, and there's my throat. I want to put you down. <laughs> no, I don't want to put you down. So let's look at that again. The attack comes in. Now, real quick. I'm saying I don't want to put him down. And the thing about doing it, when you get in like that and you're twisting their body up, it's really easy to put them down. Can you tell me what you're feeling? Tell um, them what you're feeling? So aside from a factor there that there's a lot of discomfort in where we're hooking this stuff, mm. and I kind of want to get away from it. Um, but most of what's happening is each time that we're getting into this spot, you're twisting my shoulders out of the support base of my hips. So each time we're having that push and you're always moving forward into that twist, I have no option but to start heading downwards because gravity's doing its job. And all his weight's on that leg. He can't, with his weight on that leg, he can't physically move it with his shoulders where they are. Yeah, even here with, um, without any additional mass from an opponent on me, I can't move my leg right now. I have to tilt before I can even step. There's no way I'm going to move this underneath me right now. Especially with the base of a hawk in his neck. Mm -hmm. So let's do it again. I okay. see this coming in. And I, and I get in here. So I yank that down. Right? This is here. I'm worried about that knife, so I stick it up underneath. Cover that. I'm now over his arm. Pop him once in the nose. Now I'm going to step right between his leg. And I take his knee out as I keep going forward. Go step out of the way. So I'm here. I... And I just do that, and I'm on to my next fight. Again, everything about this means I'm moving that direction. I did some classes with Maestro McDonald on World War II combatives in, while well, I was in Australia at Brisbane Swords. And World War II combatives for the uh, British Special Forces, no different at all. When I'm attacking, I'm going that direction, and I'm putting you down hard, fast, and not stopping. And that's the idea behind this. So let's do that again. Mm -hmm. He comes in. All right, I cover Ooh, that. I nice. drive that in. Oh, I covered. I missed. Now I'm underneath. That's okay. I can still do the same thing. <laughs> That was really cool. <laughs> Let's do that again. Oh, hold on. Let's switch. Okay. So the attack comes in, and I'm covering it like that because I need that cover because that's really heavy. Now he's bringing that knife in. So I'm coming through. Again, one high, one low. So I've defended here. This is here. Then I step forward, and I drive it underneath his ribs. Cover that. Pop him in the nose. And you can just lay him down on his back as you move on. Sometimes people just need to take a nap, but they don't want to, so we help them because we are nice people. Yeah, that's the one I'm going with. Think I'm going to argue? <laughs> we can do all sorts of fancy stuff. Go low and do all that. Uh, looks really good, but... Uh, let's say, give me that, give me that, give me a five right at the side of my ear. So that's the blow that's coming in. This is what I have to worry about. Do it again. I'm not going to move. If I try to stop it, do it again. And I'm across my body. I'm, now I'm just going to get hit by my own spike. I can try to knock it up. I've got a couple options on that. I can try to hit the axe like I did there. Go slow. Or I can hit the wrist. To knock it up. That's the one I'm going to go with. So that blow comes in. I'm going to step down low, hook the back of the knee, hook that with my beak, and you can just pull him right off balance and look where he goes. Do it again. Mm -hmm. And then I can still oh. stick my knife into him and keep going forward. Although I have to say, after ripping out the back tendon, probably not going to spend a lot of time standing up. Yeah. So, one more time, then we'll switch sides. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, fuck, get me shot. You all right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> right in the kidney. <laughs> so as oh. it's coming in, I'm going to back up just a little bit. As I start one high, one low, as that attack comes in, I step out and I shift. Now, see how my knife is down low? This comes down to hook that. Now my axe is low, so my knife goes high. Good. Good. Got one more in you for this? Let's do it. All right. So that comes in. I'm a sucker for punishment. Oh. And you just plow right over. What we're not going to do is throw our axe at him. Because if I throw my axe at him, I no longer have an axe. So I can do that. We only have a couple minutes left on this one. So what I want to do is I want to take this to um, hawk and knife versus hawk and sword. So now he has a cutlass. The slapping actions are even more important. Give me a one slow. Now it, he's got all that mass and all this stuff, all this blade in front of my ax. It's gonna be really hard to defend. If I'm counterattacking, he can just counter cut my fingers, right? So it's something I have to be aware of. So what we're gonna do on this one, this is where your targeting comes in. He throws that cut at me. I'm gonna step forward and my target is, uh, no, I'm gonna, that's too dangerous. I don't wanna do that. Do it again. I do that. Look where his ax is, or his sword is still going. It's still going at my face. It's not much, but it's all I've got, so I want to keep it. So from here, I'm actually going to counter his one with a one. In low to his elbow. Now, as soon as I hit his elbow, I'm worried about that one, so I'm going to turn it upside down, drive into his ribs, and then back into the throat. So let's do that. Brachial. Right in the brachial. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> that tickled. Let's do that again. Comes in. There's that one, drive that in, release, boom. That time I can hit him in the face because he's there, right? Just hit him in the bridge of the nose, get his attention. Whatever you can do. Let's do one more. Mm -hmm. You good? Good. So I'm just covering it this way. And as soon as I cover it, do it again, please. Yep. I'm stepping in to put it under his armpit, pulling back here to release and then driving through. Or if I want, as I pull my knife back, I keep my arm on his arm, then I hit his elbow. Hit him with his own axe. Quit hitting yourself. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's do it again. Drive it in, pull back. Uh-oh, well, I'm hooked on him. That's okay. I can still do the same thing with the back end of my axe. You all right? That was cool. That was really, really cool. So again, he comes through, down, there it is. Step forward to drive that in. And I still got my knife here. Last one. Yep. Good? Good. The attack comes in. Get out of the way. Cover that. Step forward to drive it in. Hook through. Look where that goes. And then I can follow through with my knife. Now, he's strong. Stand up for me. So I just hug him. <sighs> when you really, really, really care about somebody and you really want them to understand it, what do you do? You hug them, you bring them close to you. Give me a hug. Just hug. Oh. And just right there through that body. <laughs> That's what we're going for. So let's do that action one more time. Okay. Uh, let's actually do it here. All right, good. So the attack comes in. Stop. Look how far to the side I moved. I'm only half my body outside. Do it again, please. If I go further than that, I can no longer get my defense into the way and he's going to hit me in the head. So the important thing about this is I only move 
half my body width. So, let's do it again. There it is. Drive it in. No, oh, it's okay. And then boom. So, with that, we're going to stop this one. So, I'd like to say thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, somebody said something. Sarah, do we ever see a need to open the grip on the tomahawk as we do with the Messer or Arming Sword? Is there a need to switch between sides of the axe for someplace? No. I mean, our shifting grip is from the full grip, half grip, choke grip. And then as I'm throwing it, I'll do this. And so we'll do this like we do with the side sword so I can cut through. But that's all I'm going to get there. So if that's the grip you're referring to, yes, because I need to get that blow going in. Uh, so I think that's what you were referring to, and I hope so, so that I can show that. As far as sides, no, we don't have true edge fall change with this. Uh, because it's the same size all the way down, if I'm using slapping actions, it's actually just against his, no, let me change the way I say that. What it is is a true cross. So give me a cut one, slow. I create a true cross with a, my own cut one. I create a true cross with a cut four slap. I can't do this because I have no defense there. So that's too dangerous. I'm not going to necessarily stop his action because there's a lot of force coming in. And if we're on board a ship, my balance is very much suspect. So there's an introduction. Uh, this was fun. I'd like to do a little more of this. I'm down with that. If you'd like to see some more tomahawk and knife stuff, leave a comment below so that we can get in and do some more of this because I dig this stuff. Like I said, it lets me get out some of my aggression. Sorry, Johnny. What for? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions about what we do, please leave it in the comments and we'll answer it. Uh, let us know how you liked it, if this is something you'd like to see more of. Oh, you're very welcome. So, our, pleasure. our salute for this one, not because there really is one, but we're just going to come up, do this, and then down. So, thank you for joining us. Take care, everyone. We'll see you soon. Boom. Take care.